Good evening, everyone. My name is Wendy Zeely, and as the Vice Chair of the Lakeland Foundation Board of Directors, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to a historic Moreland Mansion for the Lakeland Community College Alumni Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the class of 2023. We'd like to thank each of you joining us to honor and celebrate the following four distinguished Lakeland alumni who we induct this evening into our Alumni Hall of Fame. Here we go. Catherine G. Davies, Becky Grasser, Judy Holmes Borsch, and Robert G. Kenyon Jr. Congratulations to our newest members of the Lakeland Hall of Fame. These inductees now join 88 of their fellow alumni who personify Lakeland's ideals and traditions of excellence, who bring distinction to their alma mater through their outstanding personal and professional achievements, who enhance the quality of life in their communities through acts of service, and who stand as an inspiration to current and future Lakeland students. I'd like to now invite Dr. Morris Beveridge, Jr., President of Lakeland Community College, to provide his remarks. Morris? Feel free. <laughs> well, that was a little embarrassing. Okay. Thanks, Wendy. Appreciate that. So I'm an uh, um, alum from uh, 1974. Uh, I'm was inducted in the uh, class of uh, 2006 into the Alumni Hall of Fame. And tonight it's my pleasure to uh, recognize our inductees and uh, just well deserved. And I'm proud to say we have two members of our faculty who are being inducted tonight. So congratulations uh, to you folks. Um, great instructors, great teachers, uh, great feedback from students and, and a well deserved recognition. We, uh, <laughs> there we go. Oh, that you'll recognize. <laughs> um, so we had a little gathering beforehand, and uh, Tina's already upset because I'm off script already. <laughs> but um, I'll, I'll get back, I'll get back, I promise. Um, so we had a little get together and uh, uh, some of our fellow alum uh, Hall of Fame members meet with the current class. And uh, there was a lot of discussion about how uh, nervous they were about a three to five minute speech, okay? So I think in fairness, uh, what we should do is not make eye contact. <laughs> You can look outside if you want, you know, just, just recognize, you know, that their, uh, their hearts are racing, their palms are a little sweaty, uh, the words are getting blurry, some of them are near tears. I'm not helping. <laughs> Other than that, good luck. Um, <laughs> So the Hall of Fame was established in 2006 uh, for the primary purpose of uh, recognizing some of Lakeland's graduates uh, for their professional accomplishments, uh, community service and leadership, um, and uh, in generally bring prestige to, to Lakeland and uh, to what they've accomplished uh, as a result of, in part, uh, being a graduate of Lakeland. Um, and I can't tell you how much it means to our current students to be able to stand and look at a list of people who not only made it through, but made it through with, with accomplishments and have gone into the community and become uh, uh, standard bearers of how a community college, uh, and in particular Lakeland, can change you in such a way that you become a leader of whatever it is you want to do and gives you that confidence uh, to go out and, and, uh, and uh, make those differences matter. 
Um, one of the topics that we talked about was uh, the Alumni Hall of Fame Scholarship, uh, which was established by our Hall of Fame members. Since the fund's inception, uh, we have raised over $23,000 just from the Alumni Hall of Fame members uh, for scholarships uh, to be awarded to eligible Lakeland students. Um, the Olga Freitag Alumni Endowed Scholarship also provides students with financial support. This is a needs-based, and we have a lot of students with a lot of needs. This is a need-based uh, fund established in 1994 uh, to recognize alumna uh, Olga Freitag's work in establishing the Lakeland Community College Alumni Association uh, and to provide financial support uh, for eligible Lakeland students. Um, any, uh, any help that you would like uh, to offer? Help meaning money? <laughs> in case I'm trying to be coy here. Um, any money that you have brought with you or have access to? Or <laughs> or you see in the purse sitting next to you, um, <laughs> feel free to make that donation. Thank you. Um, so let me, uh, let me give you the criteria for, uh, for getting, becoming inducted, for getting inducted, I guess that's proper English, uh, into the uh, Lakeland Community College Alumni Hall of Fame. First, nominees must be graduates of Lakeland Community College. Second, nominees must, be, uh, must have graduated at least 10 years prior to the year in which they are nominated. And third, nominees must demonstrate a record of distinction that uh, personifies Lakeland's ideals by making a significant difference in the community. I think you're going to hear uh, four incredible uh, stories supporting that tonight. Um, this may be demonstrated by career success, professional achievement or recognition, community service, uh, involvement, leadership, uh, and or service to the college itself. Um, as Wendy uh, mentioned, we've inducted now 88 alumni uh, uh, to date. So with our four new ones, that will be 92. <laughs> Remedial math, I'm signing up tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> at any rate, so this evening, our inductees will be introduced by two members of the Alumni Hall of Fame. Mike Thomas, Hall of Fame class of 2019, and alumni representative to the Lakin Foundation Board of Directors. Uh, and Greg Sanders, uh, Hall of Fame class of 2014, and Vice President for Institutional Advancement and Executive Director of the Lakeland Foundation. And what you may have noticed is that we find at Lakeland, it's a lot cheaper to give big titles. <laughs> so, um, so before I uh, invite Mike up to begin with our first inductee, I'd like to see if we have any other members of the uh, Alumni Hall of Fame. If you're a member of the Alumni Hall of Fame, uh, you guys aren't it yet. Okay, so, so leave your seatbelts on. Uh, if you're a member of the uh, Alumni Hall of Fame, please stand up. Next year, you guys can stand up. And with that, I turn it over to Mr. Mike Thomas. Let's get this party started. So for all of our alumni, welcome back to campus. For those of you that have never been here, welcome to Lakeland. Um, and as I told our inductees at the beginning or in our pre-meeting that Morris referenced, this is one of those nights in your life that's going to be a blur when you think about it tomorrow. Um, I know it was for me. I'm sure it was for all of our other um, Hall of Fame members. But it's just one of those life moments that all of a sudden it's over. Um, so my advice is soak it all in the next hour or so. Soak it in and, and, and enjoy the whole, the whole show. All right, 
Our first inductee this evening is Catherine G. Davies. Kathy earned her associate degree in medical laboratory technology from Lakeland in 1979. Wait a second. Yes. Part of the embarrassment is that she has to stand up. I, I know. I well, well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that it's kind of, this is, this, this stance of shame. <laughs> no, I consider this rock. <laughs> All right, we're back. Where are we? 1979. I don't want to tell you where I was in 79. She continued her education, earning a certificate in medical technology from Mount Sinai School of Medical Technology and a bachelor's degree in medical technology from Cleveland State University, both in 1983, followed by a master's degree in health sciences from Cleveland State in 2004. Kathy was a prof professor of medical laboratory technology and phlebotomy at Lakeland from 1983 until she retired as the director of the program in 2023. Beyond her work in the classroom and as program director, Kathy expanded her outreach to K through 12 students for STEM and career exploration events, including an enrichment seminar for elementary school science Olympiad contestants, health tech for teens, programming through Lakeland's summer camps and hosting, hosting days of health science at Lakeland for elementary school students. That wasn't smooth. No, I, I don't think you wrote that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. Kathy received the college's Excellence in Teaching Award in 2011 and was nominated again for the award in 2022. In 2023, she had the honor of being named faculty marshal for Lakeland's 56th annual commencement ceremony. Kathy's proud to have graduated over 400 laboratory technicians who are currently saving lives in area hospitals. Please join me in welcoming Kathy Davies. Thank you very much. So, so what is an MLT or a medical laboratory technician? That's the question. Huh? I think my mom was never happier when I got the job at Lakeland teaching so she didn't have to explain to anybody what I actually really did. Um, but um, I can't believe I'm here uh, amongst all of these people. I think my first, um, okay, I'm going to stop it. My kids are going, Mom, don't do that. Um, <laughs> I, I know, I know. So, so I'm really not going to do it. I really am nervous, and I think it's because this is such an honor. Um, so I'm amongst all these wonderful people who did all these wonderful things, and then there's, you know, then there's me. But um, I have been teaching here at Lakeland since 1982 part-time. It was 92 um, full-time, so I graduated from Lakeland in 79. So I pretty much grew up here. Um, I've, I've always been here. Um, and so I've been teaching for a long time. Um, the day I realized I'd been here for a long time was um, one of the days when I was teaching medical terminology and I was getting all excited because I was teaching philic and phobic and you know philic means you love something and phobic means ooh you don't, you know, like that. So I don't know what kind of a tangent I got on, but I got on this Paul Newman philic, you know, like I, like, <laughs> right, Paul Newman? I mean, he's hot, he's, you know, whatever. And I kept going on Paul Newman, Paul Newman. And um, when I left the classroom, there's two young girls, obviously, they were young standing on the side of the wall going oh my god that teacher's got the hots for the guy on the salad dressing bottle <laughs> <laughs> so had to change that one yeah I had to change that one so I, I really only have five minutes so um, I'm going to just talk about what Lakeland Community College actually did for me and what it um, what it what it means to me and um, that's kind of harder than you think, considering I graduated 44 years ago. Um, and I did start at Lakeland when I was 17. So I graduated when I was 19. So, it, I mean, what do I, I'm thinking, what was I thinking back? I know what I was thinking, but I'm not telling you guys what I, <laughs> what I was thinking. Um, but I do remember when I was in elementary school, okay, and it won't be long, I really only have five minutes. I, mean, I was playing on a city softball team. And I, I, got a, I got a uniform, you know. I was really excited. My sister was playing with me. And we shared a position called short right. 
And if you know right from left, you know, when you're standing batting, that's on this side and it's right behind the shortstop. Okay, which was the best place for me because I never had to get the ball. <laughs> the, you know, the shortstop would always get the ball. You know, so I I, I never had to worry. I, I was great. And then my I shared the, the position with my sister, so I was only out there half the game, which was fine with me. I was on the bench. I didn't think I should be anywhere else but on that bench, and I was happy on that bench. You know, this it just it, it just was it was cool. Um, but um, I did love playing softball. I, I just was part of the team. I didn't contribute much, but I was, was part of the team. And it never occurred to me that I should play more or that I should get even better or should I practice. Um, I was very happy and content there. And I think my thoughts about softball was pretty much the same way I grew up about college. You know, why? I mean, I'm good. You know, I ne just never really thought about it until my ACTs came in in high school. And um, they came out pretty high, and, and, and it turns out I was kind of smart. So, you know, who knew? I, I don't know. Um, the counselors were surprised. My parents were surprised. <laughs> I was surprised. Um, so my high school counselors did that one of those one of those little tests to decide on what you're interested in to take in college. They did that, and they said, oh, you should go to... Lakeland, and you should um, go into medical laboratory technology. And I'm thinking, okay, cool. You know, I can, I can, I can do that. But I didn't know what MLT was either. You know, you know. So, so um, again, what did Lakeland do for me? Um, Lakeland took that content, happy girl who just liked sitting on the bench, and in her introduced her to a career that she became passionate about. Lakeland taught that girl to love learning. Lakeland taught that girl that there was something called studying. And if she did that, she would do well. Lakeland taught that girl to be proud of herself and that she could want and have more. Lakeland took that middle child of seven, took her out of her comfort zone, and taught her that she had something to say. That's what Lakeland did for me. Now, I don't know where I'd be, probably in a box under a bridge or something if it wasn't for Lakeland, but I, I think it was, it was just the faculty that took me to the place where I thought I was going to do more. I really had to really fight with my parents and push to be able to go to college because being a middle child, my older sisters already went and they got married before they, they graduated, so I was going to be wasting money, my mom would say. So it, it was... It was tough for me to, um, to actually go to college. Um, so I really feel it was the Lakeland faculty that because they practiced the community college way, and we always ask new, new employees, what, what is um, a community college? What's different about a community college? And I think it's because they, they, they have the luxury of being able to care about each student. They, the classrooms are small enough, they can get to know their names, they, can, they know when they're having a bad day, things like that. They maintain the rigor of the program so that when I graduated, I was good at my job. When I got out in the hospital, I was good at what I did. You know, eventually, I was no longer the student, so they came and asked me questions and things like that. Um, and then one of the first, after the first week of class, we learned how to draw blood, and they actually grabbed me and said, you have a job now at Lake West, and you're going to be a phlebotomist. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> really? I mean, but but I, I did that. Um, they also taught me how to handle real-life situations um, because they were working out in the field. One of the real-life situations I'm going to tell you about, and I'm going to um, demo with Morris here, is I was, I was drawing blood on a, 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 an elderly lady, she probably is my age now, and I had her arm in, and she had on a real tight sweater. So I was trying to push up her arm so I could draw her blood. And I'm pushing, pushing, and my hand slipped. Actually, I was on this side. <laughs> Watch this. And my hand slipped, and bam, I hit her right in the face and her teeth fell out. <laughs> They, they fell out. I'm sorry, did I hit you hard? <laughs> right in her lap. Her teeth fell out I right in her lap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have to stick her anymore. But yeah, that, that was kind of a, a, a crazy thing that happened to me. And 
I don't know, I think the faculty teach you how to handle that kind of thing. I, I, I didn't, I just said I'm sorry many, 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 many times. Um, and it's because of Lakeland's faculty that after graduation, I did have the tools to succeed at earning my bachelor's degree, my master's degree. I did feel smart and prepared for college as, as I went on. It was the Lakeland's faculty that gave me the tools to be a good medical technologist for more than 23 years taught me how to be a good teacher, too. Okay, I retired from Lakeland four months ago. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching my babies, my, my little grandchildren. It's so, so wonderful. Um, and I've been teaching 10 years part-time, 29 years full-time. Um, and I'm now, I, I graduated from directing the program that I graduated from. I retired from the same program that I graduated from. So I think I owe all of my professional, professional success to Lakeland, professional and some of my other stuff. And um, I wanted to say thank you to Lakeland for doing that for me. So thank you. Stay here for one second. So I asked Kathy to stay up here for just one second. I want to tell a quick story, but maybe I should stay at arm's length a little bit. <laughs> Um, so as fate would have it tomorrow, you mentioned during your remarks a lot of what Lakeland did for you. Yes. I want to tell a quick story, and this is a, a true story about what you've done for Lakeland. So tomorrow I have a meeting with, by the way, I'm Greg Sanders, I'm, I'm direct of the Lakeland Foundation. Um, I want a shorter title, but I, the guy won't give it to me. Um, so tomorrow we have a meeting with Metro Health. Uh, Metro Health has reached out to us um, and asked if they could have a conversation with us about the potential for them to pay for the education and educational needs of students who are going through the medical lab tech program. Right. The reason they're doing that, and they, this is Metro Health's words, not mine, is Lakeland graduates the best med lab techs and that's who they want to hire. And so when you talk about what Lakeland has done for you. Please know what you've done for this college and for students and for healthcare in this, in this region. Thank it's you. Because it's a lot. Thank you. And thanks for making my job easy. I mean, really, how much easier could I get than that? But seriously, that's amazing. Um, all right. Moving on to our second. Inductee, Becky Grasser. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> packed house. Our second inductee is Becky Grasser. Becky earned her associate degree from Lakeland in 2012, graduating summa cum laude at and as a member of Lakeland's Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, of which Andy Musial over here is one of the <laughs> leaders of to this day. Prior to studying at Lakeland, she earned a bachelor's degree in computer engineering from George Washington University in 1994, a master's degree in computer and information science from Cleveland State University in 1998, and a doctorate in engineering from the Fenn College of Engineering at Cleveland State in 2005 been a little busy. <laughs> she has been a professor of information technology and computer science at Lakeland since 2000 and is a professional engineer registered to practice in the state of Ohio. Becky has published articles in several academic journals and presented at national and international conferences for technology and computer science education. She was a faculty scholar at the 2020 Grace Hopper Celebration, the world's largest annual gathering of women technologists. Becky is a distinguished academic and holds degrees and certificates in a range of disciplines, including communications, business administration, fine arts, and will complete her certificate in archaeology in 2024. Stand busy. She is also an accomplished photographer, exhibiting her works in solo, group, and juried exhibitions regionally and internationally. Her art has been represented by Stella's Art Gallery in Willoughby since 2021. And before I say it's my pleasure to introduce you, I just want to say um, 
I subscribe like many of you do to Facebook, LinkedIn, and so we put out the um, people who are being inducted with a brief story about them, and it's fun to read comments, and a comment that resonated with me was from a student, a former student of yours, who talked about how hard of a teacher you, you were, how wonderful of a teacher you were, and I think they may have even said you're the best teacher they ever, ever had, and how they'll never forget you and what you've done for them. So um, without any further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome Becky Grasser. joking earlier about being nervous. I'm not nervous in front of people, but I had to write it down or I'd go into teacher mode because we'd be here for 50 minutes. <laughs> that would just be generally bad. Um, so, hi. Um, Lakeland has been my home since 2000. Uh, I've seen the impact of students from both sides of the podium. Uh, even though I started my career in liberal arts, I eventually found that engineering was really more my thing. My, you know, my father and grandfather were engineers. I really didn't get a choice. Um, but in 2007, I like, needed a break from being a scientist and decided I'm going to take some classes at Lakeland. So the first class I chose was with Dr. Bruce Klein in the film photography department. And I was so entranced by the process, um, what I said is actually not printable. When he put the piece of paper in the fluid and a picture came out, I was like, it's the best, no, no, I said a lot of things which are not printable. Um, so at that point I decided, okay, he's got me hooked. Um, so I ended up taking every class, in the, almost every class in the department. There's, the only ones I didn't take were wedding photography and portrait photography because you have to work with people. And <laughs> 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 um, so I learned film photography. I still shoot a lot of film. I have a whole refrigerator full of film, because who doesn't? Um, I also learned digital photography. I made images in parks, on, the, on campus, on the streets, and in the commercial studio. And the big revelation came when I discovered that the department offered travel photography. I could go places and make pictures, oh my god. So I was fortunate enough to travel to France with uh, Dr. Klein and Frank Perpic multiple times. To be able to discover new culture as a student was absolutely a wonder. To be able to see other students' perspectives of new things, to be able to see my perspective of new things, to be able to meet new people, to speak new languages, eat new food, go to museums and galleries, wander through bookstores, yes, castles and churches, because France. Uh, I walked, got lost, found things that weren't on the map. It was, and I actually talked to people. It was the best thing ever. From those trips came more adventures. I knew that I was presenting a paper at a conference in Germany, so I wandered over to the modern language people and said, oh, look, you have a German class. And I took that. Uh, that class gave me the courage and the ability to survive by myself for six weeks in Germany in a whole bunch of different cities. Not a bad thing. Um, after returning from each adventure, then I was able to introduce my students to what was happening outside of the county boundaries. Um, we talked about new cultures. We worked virtually with other students uh, on collaborative projects. Um, we did a, uh, a game jam with five other countries. I mean, how cool is that? Um, with my French colleagues, we were able to do all kinds of things, and it was a serious learning experience for everybody. Don't get me wrong, it did not go right the first dozen times. But eventually we got it. Um, and along the way, I was able to complete my own work on my own craft, and from studying at Lakeland, I had the courage to go on and get a master's in photography. Because, like, fine art? Oh my god, that's terrifying. But I did it. Um, as a result of what I learned here, um, the, the fine art program sort of hones your skills, the, the master sort of hones your skills on being an adult in photography, but the real skills you get here, there's no doubt. Uh, I've now had my photos in galleries in a whole bunch of different states. I've had my photos in galleries in France and in Spain. I mean, that's pretty darn cool. Um, but my start at Lakeland was exactly what I needed to get to that level. It, it just I, what I learned here, best ever. Um, I did well academically, even though the art part was not exactly recent, like it was old. But um, still going from science back to art was a big leap. But 
along the way, I got asked to be in Phi Theta Kappa, and of course, yes. Um, but I first reached out to Dr. Heiner, and I said, if I said yes, I'm not coming to meetings, because, like, I'm old. Um, <laughs> and I said, I've got to be a little out of place. Um, he laughed and said I would be the first member of PTK who also had a doctorate, but sure. Um, I kept my word. And along the way, we've, uh, I've offered to help with anyone who needed commencement swag. Uh, the four of us have started a scholarship fund, something, uh, that pays for four students to join PTK. We just pay to their membership fees. It's taken care of. Um, so I know what being in an honor society does for futures. Um, I missed out on the first time because I wasn't exactly a great student first couple of degrees. I was, you know, in the middle. I was happy with the middle. That was a great place. But I wanted the next generation not to miss out on that. Um, so anything I can do to get students not only to graduate, but to have what places, things like PTK offer them, um, yes, sign me up. Um, I've been privileged along the way to attend schools of many types, from state universities to military schools, to private schools that I didn't pay for. I got, a, I got a ride from the government to go to private school, and I wasn't coming out of my pocket. Um, in multiple states and in multiple countries, everybody laughed at my certificate in archaeology at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland um, because they have a really cool online program in archaeology. Um, at each place, I look around at what they have, and then I look around at what we have. And how I figure out how to compare student services and how the faculty and staff work with students to ensure their success, um, whatever success means to that student, because it means a thousand things, right? A student might take their first ever class in a classroom, right? We've all had all the homeschool kids who come to us, and this is their first time in a classroom at, oh, geez. Um, a student completes a course, any course. They've completed a course. Uh, the student got an A on a test, right? Uh, the student goes into the military, they go into the trades, they go into industry after coming here to learn a skill. So they've taken two classes and they're gone. Um, a student finishes a program of study and then transfers to any one of a hundred universities and colleges around the area. Um, I have three students from my program who are currently at Case, Case Western. Not a bad leap. Um, we're asked to write letters of recommendation for jobs, for grad school, for promotions. And each time I look at the schools I have been associated with, whether as teaching or a student, and then compare it to Lakeland, we come out on top. We just do. Um, for that personal one-to-one, -one, working with students, getting students from where they were to where they need to be. Um, so at the point he had into the sword, where the students are, there's no comparison. What we do with our students is like, it's no comparison. So opportunity does start here. It's not just a cool slogan. Uh, and I'm really proud to call myself an alumni. So thank you very much. to take everyone else's pieces of paper. <laughs> oh yeah, please don't. <laughs> I'll really mess up. <laughs> so Becky, I also had Bruce Klein uh, oh. as an instructor. Um, and when I went to Lakeland, I, I did concentrate in photography and, and that program actually got me in the door where I'm at now. I'm 38 years later, I'm still down at Case Western Reserve, so. Cool. All righty. Our third inductee this evening. Oh, you gotta come up here. Morris will have it. Yes. <laughs> Rules of rule. <laughs> okay. Our third inductee is Judy Holmes Borsch. Judy is a proud alumna of Lakeland's inaugural nursing class, earning an associate degree in 1970. Prior to receiving her RN certification from Lakeland, she graduated in 1967 from the LPN program at the University of Kansas. Judy began her career as a staff nurse in the Medical Coronary Intensive Care Unit at Richmond Heights General Hospital, 
then advanced to head nurse before joining the nursing staff at Cleveland Clinic in 1973. By 1978, Judy was the research manager for the clinic's Department of Thoracic and Cardiovascular Surgery, during which she participated in research that helped develop new techniques to monitor cardiac performance, which then led to clinical trials. Over a span of 38 years, Judy participated in approximately 320 clinical trials in the areas of cardiac surgery, rheumatology, and gastroenterology, and helped author 17 articles in peer-reviewed journals. Judy has volunteered in the community with the Unionville Tavern Preservation Society, the Walk to Cure Arthritis, the American Heart Association, and participated in the efforts to restore Moreland Mansion in the 1980s. Judy's husband, Charlie Holmes, has been a member of the Lakeland Civic Band for 44 years. Thus, Lakeland continues to be a part of their family. Please join me in welcoming Judy Holmes Borsch. Well, I'm in trouble already. Thank you, Mike, because you, you said a lot of my speech. <laughs> that might be a little redundant here. Um, but I would like to thank, oh, wait. There's something's wrong. <laughs> okay, now I can see. Oh yeah, I would like to thank the Lakeland Foundation and Lakeland Alumni Association for this rec recognition. I'm honored and humbled to be in the company of these outstanding alumni, fantastic people here today. I'm fortunate in the audience. I have my sisters, Joan and Joyce. Joyce with the pink hair. Uh, Joyce worked here at Lakeland in the humanities and the police department for many years. Um, also in my audience are my nieces and nephews, that handsome Marine, uh, Navy. <laughs> I have another nephew that's a Marine, but he's a Navy. And my nieces, uh, Valerie and uh, Nicole. And I have some dear friends here, Nancy and Rick and Michelle. But a really, someone that's very close to my heart are the Smizers. Jennifer, Andrew, and Finn. We won the neighbor lot when they moved in next door to us. And we, we've enjoyed many, many good times with them, and more to come. Um, but I also would like to thank Phil Boyle, behind the camera there. <laughs> Phil was the one who nominated me and conspired with my husband for this, uh, for this recognition. It was indeed a surprise and a shock when I got a call that morning to learn that I was not only nominated, but actually had accepted. And it still feels pretty unreal. Of course, I'd like to thank my wonderful husband, Charlie. Charlie's made my life complete. He also has a strong Lakeland um, tie, as you heard, being in the Lakeland Community Civic Band. He also um, uh, helps out with the orchestra, the Civic Orchestra, too. Um, he's been a, a, just a, a, my solid rock. Thank you, honey. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, as you know, as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a nurse. A little side note, we were children of the 50s, so we always played war games and stuff, and I was always the spy nurse. I would hide a gun under my cape, <laughs> you know, it was, I just, you know, it was always the nurse. Um, I had a nurse's play kit when I was young, and my poor dolls were mostly in bandages, not in pretty <laughs> doll clothes. Um, but however, in high school, I was advised I was not college material. Now, this was in the 60s, and they just didn't push a lot of college on people. But I was very fortunate that my older sister, Nancy, also wanted a career in nursing. So she suggested I come out to Kansas and go to school with her to LPN school. So I, I absolutely loved bedside nursing and probably would have been happy with that for my career. But when I returned home in 1967, my mom saw a newspaper article that a new Lake County Community College was going to offer an RN program. And she encouraged me to go and enroll. So in 1968, I started school, but not in the fantastic facility that we have here now with robots and all that stuff. 
we were in a bank building on the second floor in Painesville. <laughs> and our labs were in the basement of a strip mall in Manor. And we practiced on each other. <laughs> so somehow we survived. But here's where we did luck out. Our, <clears throat> most of our nursing instructors came from the just closed Mount Sinai School of Nursing. So we were able to do our clinicals at Mount Sinai Hospital with those wonderful instructors. And our class was filled with amazing women and one brave man. And we went on to be a very successful graduating class. Many of my classmates went on to further education and nursing positions, but I was happy to keep working in the ICUs. However, soon I knew I wanted to learn even more. So I started at the Cleveland Clinic in 1973 and thus started a very interesting journey that led to be on the forefront of many new interventions in cardiac surgery and later in new drug developments for many diseases. I was always proud to say I was among the first graduating nursing class at Lakewood. And to this day, I take great pride in the fact that the program is now one of the premier programs in the state. You know, us nurses loved Florence Nightingale. <laughs> And uh, well, she was the first to coin the phrase, the art of nursing, noting that nursing, like art, must adapt into many forms, but it's, it's empathy and compassion that make nursing a true art. The art of nursing was alive in that first class in 1970, and it continues to be the cornerstone of the nursing program here today. I'm so grateful for the opportunity Lakeland College gave me and the continued education of these new generations of amazing Lakeland nurses. Thank you. So, quick story again. Um, I met Judy via her wonderful neighbor and our wonderful colleague here at Lakeland, Jen Smizer. Um, Jen mentioned to me, I don't know how long ago, three years or so ago, that Judy was an alum and that she's a caring person and she would like to introduce her to, to Lakeland and, and the Lakeland Foundation. And after a couple of conversations, Judy and Charlie really asked the question of what can we do? How can we help? How can we help students persist and succeed and become nurses. And as a result of, of their generosity, there's a, there's a fund within Lakeland Foundation now, it's called the Judith and Charles Holmes Fund, um, that supports the needs outside of the educational specific needs. And so a lot of times what happens with our nursing students is there's, well, all of our students are required to take an NCLEX, it's a board to become a registered nurse upon completion of their coursework. <laughs> Oftentimes our students find themselves in a situation where they can't afford to pay for that test. So that test is delayed. And the longer you delay taking that test, statistically speaking, the less likely you are to pass it. So the fund that Judy and Char Charlie have created, in essence, allows for those types of expenses to be paid for out of their fund so that our nursing students are much more likely to pass their NCLEX, for example, than they, than they would be without it. So I want your heart and soul is in nursing, and, and, and we're so grateful to have you as a, a friend of an alumni. Thank Hall of you. Thanks, you. And then there was Bob. <laughs> Bob Kenyon, come on up. Okay. Our fourth and final inductee this evening is Robert G. Kenyon, Jr. Bob earned his associate degree from Lakeland in 1978 and his bachelor's degree in chemistry from the University of Akron in 1980. He is a retired senior research chemist with Recirca Biosciences, LLC. A lifelong resident of Geneva, Bob serves on the Ashtabula County Senior Services Levy Advisory Board and is a member and past treasurer of the Geneva Rotary Club. Additionally, he volunteers for the Ashtabula County Medical Center 
UH TriPoint Medical Center, and the Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program, in which IRS certified volunteers provide free basic income tax return preparation to qualified individuals in need. Bob became involved with the Boy Scouts of America as a youth, having earned the rank of Eagle Scout at age 13, which is, that's really impressive. <laughs> that is not easy to do. Um, and later holding leadership positions such as Program Secretary for the Greater Western Reserve Council, which has since merged into the Lake Erie Council. Bob credits his years with the BSA for instilling in him the lessons of leadership and service that he carried throughout his life, personally and professionally. In 1989, Bob was honored by the Boy Scouts of America with the Distinguished Silver Beaver Award, a council-level service award given to those who implement the scouting program and perform community service through hard work, self-sacrifice, dedication, and many years of service. It is given to those who do not seek it. Bob, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the podium. Congratulations. So good evening, everyone. As I begin my remarks, I want to first thank the Lakeland Foundation and the Lakeland Alumni Association for selecting me to receive this honor. I am truly humbled to receive this in the company of so many outstanding alumni from Lakeland. I also want to thank those friends who accompanied me to this evening's program. More importantly, though, I want to sincerely, I sincerely want to acknowledge those in my life who, through their gifts, guided me along my career path. My parents, Jane and Robert Kenyon, my teachers from kindergarten through high school, and those who instructed me while I attended Lakeland, particularly my organic chemistry professor, Phil Roskus, who still is a faculty member to this day. <laughs> Um, he, I, I, I would have to say, he sparked my interest in chemistry. That's for, that's for darn sure. <laughs> yes, literally. He was very good at those um, lab uh, demonstrations. Um, my experience at Lakeland provided a sound foundation as I moved on to the University of Akron and then to fully enter upon my career. Following my time at Akron, I connected with the Men's Resource Center at Lakeland. This opportunity afforded me further resources through the job shop, which was a, a program that Jim did every Monday, to plan for and achieve my additional job and career goals. For this very positive experience in my life, I gratefully appreciate the work of Jim Shelley, director of the Men's Resource Center. I want everyone to know that Jim's efforts are a significant factor in my life that has fed my passion for service to others. Receiving this honor from the Lakeland Foundation and the Lakeland Alumni Association is a recognition I will always cherish. Again, I thank you for this honor. A saying that I favor and would share with you is this. Believe in your dreams. They were given to you for a reason. Please remember that we all have gifts. I would ask that you use yours to help others. Thank you. Well, those were all very passionate speeches. And again, I, I just want to thank each and every one of you for your guidance and support to everyone else in this room. Um, Kathy, Becky, Judy, Bob, for representing the Lakeland spirit of excellence. We all have big, huge shoes to fill. So um, as I am pleased to be honored uh, to be in this room tonight, I'd like to actually acknowledge our Lake County Commissioner, John Hammercheck. Are you? I saw you earlier. Thank you again for joining us. Appreciate it. Uh, Morris, you took part of my script away where uh, we already had our alumni, a current alumni uh, stand in, so Tina will be reprimanding you later for that. Uh, <laughs> and if we have, <laughs> I'm just pointing out the obvious. Uh, and if we have any other uh, Lakeland Foundation board trustees in attendance, I'm not sure, but uh, anyone? Bueller? Okay. Well, Capi's here, I know that. There you go. Can you guys please stand? Appreciate all the support. Okay, I'm gonna flip the page here. All right, 
Ooh, skipping here. Okay. And now uh, I'd like to invite my colleague in attendance from the Lakeland Foundation Board of Directors to play. I already did that, sorry. See, I'm ahead of the game here. Um, and thank you all for your support of Lakeland. Greg, I'm gonna let you make the closing remarks. Thank you, all right, you're right. I should've went the other way. Thank, thanks again, we have a, a wonderful audience tonight. Thanks for coming out to support our wonderful inductees. Uh, in addition to my professional role at Lakeland, I'm proud alum in the class of 1991 uh, and was extremely honored to be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2014. Since the inception of the Lakeland Alumni Hall of Fame in 2006, Hall of Fame members and their families have given through current gifts and future estate plans more than $2 million to various efforts to support student-centered programs and scholarships for Lakeland students now and into the future. We cannot thank you enough for your generosity, dedication, and commitment to the future of Lakeland Community College and our students. I want to extend our sincere appreciation to the Lakeland Alumni Hall of Fame Selection Committee for their work and support throughout our induction process, and to Mike Thomas, the alumni representative, for your guidance and leadership. This year we had 28 members on the Hall of Fame Selection Committee, which was a record number as far as we know, and so a lot of that has to do with your leadership and, and guidance, so thanks for all that, Mike. And finally, I'd like to acknowledge the entire Lakeland Foundation team for making this event happen. I want to single out one person, if she's in the room, Nancy Brooks, um, for really spearheading tonight's, tonight's event. She does a great job in everything she does, including tonight. So thank you, Nancy. She's there? She's out there? In addition to Nancy, Tina Boucher, Maureen McGinnis, and Tracy Morris are here tonight to support to support the event. So thanks guys for being here. I'm gonna try and make this sound as non-cliche. I have got the best team. I have got the best team. They are awesome. Um, thanks to the college's marketing communication department and institutional technologies staff for your support as well. So again, final time I'll do this, I guess, and with a microphone in front of me. Congratulations. Um, welcome into the Alumni Hall of Fame. I hope it's as special for you, it seems to be, as it was for me and, and the rest of the inductees. It's a wonderful celebration of what you're, you've done um, for the college and, and what the college has done for you. So congratulations to these wonderful and outstanding new inductees. And Nancy just walked in, so can I get a round of applause for Nancy? And Nancy remembers everything. So last year she said, I don't even remember saying this, she said, last year you said, go on out and enjoy the buffet more. The buffet was closed. So unfortunately the buffet is no longer open. I wanna make that very clear. Nancy, you heard me say it. Anyway, thanks everyone for coming. Have a wonderful evening.